disturbing, your first story. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you alluded to it before, yeah. about women in tech being mm -hmm. harassed. This is, this is, this has gotten serious, Chris. Very serious. I mean, to the point, I mean, we, we talked six weeks ago about yeah, how yeah. Anita Sarkeesian, uh, that the police were finally getting involved in that. And since then, it has really escalated. Uh, last week, Anita Sarkeesian, she had a talk at a university down in the States, and it had to be canceled because they received threats, serious threats, of a man who uh, was claiming that he was going to cause the worst school shooting in history, uh, bombing, terrorism, and he even called himself Marc Lapierre because Anita is from Canada. And so he was referencing uh, the shooting in Montreal. Very, very horrible. And it's been a difficult thing for people to come to terms with in terms of what you take away from this whole situation. So I thought, I'll do my best today. It's a convoluted kind of issue to get through, but we'll, we'll see if we can get some value out of this moving forward. And uh, what I will tell you is it's called Gamergate, mm -hmm. and that's a hashtag on Twitter. And uh, it's about 8,000 and 10,000 tweets are posted every day about this. It's become something that's consumed a, a large number of people. And it's two things, really. First, it is an, uh, a campaign of online harassment that has been specifically targeting now four women in the last couple of months. But it also, and this is what makes it confusing, is a large number of well-meaning, mm -hmm. good-intentioned uh, gamers, youth, people in their teens and 20s who have been drawn by this to become concerned with issues that they think is very important and still need to be talked about despite uh, the threats. And that's what makes this very, very confusing for parents, I think, to try to understand what's going on. Because you go online, you do research, and you'll find you know, people who are just like your son or your daughters who are like, yay, Gamergate! And, you know, the Gamergate represents threatening women with rape and with death wow. and, and the horrible things. I don't understand. I don't understand where this came from. No. So okay, I'll, I'll take you through that then. Uh, so this initially began with uh, groups of people who we often refer to as trolls, who organized themselves to create campaigns of harm and harassment, and they do this because they find it entertaining, but also I think that they do get a bit of a high because they feel like they're in control. Maybe the rest of the time in their lives, they don't feel like they're in control. And the kind of things that they do, one that was really bad, was they found a forum, a support forum for people who are, have epilepsy. And they would go on and pretend that they have epilepsy and upload animations with strobing lights and giggle that they may be causing seizures amongst the people on this forum. Uh, they get together and they look for people online who they can target with harassment. And they've been doing this for a couple of years, targeting specifically women, and especially women in certain issues that may be sort of, you know, touch button issues. Um, this year, that escalated when in the summertime they chose as a target a woman named Zoe Quinn. They chose her because she designed a video game about depression called Depression Quest. And when it came out, uh, it wasn't something that she had planned, it just happened to launch on the same day that Robin Williams had had passed and mental health was a big issue. Mm -hmm. So she received a lot of attention in the press. I mean, it's the kind of story that we as journalists love. A yeah. woman has designed a game, it's about depression, mm -hmm. very brave. Um, she had an ex-boyfriend that was upset at the attention that she was getting. Didn't like the fact that she was being praised as this wonderful person, so he wrote a reveal tell-all suggesting that she wasn't very nice, that she had cheated on him and things like that. This group oh. that does these online harassment campaigns decided this was too good to give up. And they went after Zoe Quinn with harassments of threat and rape and violence. And, uh, but specifically what they did was they campaigned the idea that this wasn't them being malicious or mean, but they were concerned about ethics because the suggestion was that this woman, Zoe Quinn, had slept with reporters in order to get attention mm -hmm. to her game depression. And what happened, this is where things get really confusing, is that seemed to touch a nerve, a fear, and insecurity in a lot of young people today who play video games. They were led to believe that they need to be concerned that as we get into issues of women in video games, that political correctedness is going to take over video games and take away their opportunity to play games in which there are big macho men mm -hmm. and there are very sexually uh, accessible young ladies. And so we've had, over the last couple of months, about 8,000, 10,000 young people who genuinely think that there's a real protest to be involved here. So they're really m being misled, as far as you're concerned. This is just this is fun and a and a power high yeah. for a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. um, and and what about the social platforms? Don't they can't they stop this? Well, so here's how things get really interesting. When initially those stories started to come about Zoe Quinn, and then eventually you have uh, Anita Sarkeesian, 
um, the initial reaction, I think, for a lot of people was just, if you ignore it, it'll go away. If you don't feed the trolls, if you don't give them attention, what they did not understand was that these trolls were getting attention from all these young people that were rallying to their cause. And a good example of just how confusing that is, is that they went after a woman named Lee Alexander. She noticed that very few people were actually talking about this. We talked about it six mm -hmm. weeks ago, but nobody else was. So she wrote an article. So these trolls managed to gather their army of well-meaning youths and had them write a letter campaign to the advertisers on her website. Intel actually pulled their ads in response because what they saw were hundreds and thousands of emails coming to them from well-intended youth saying they were concerned about this woman's uh, editorial, that it was too controversial, they shouldn't support it. Intel pulled their ads. So even Intel became duped by this. Intel later on has issued an apology, saying they did not fully understand the issues. And what they were trying to do was try not to take sides, and invariably did take sides. So this has been what has been very confusing in terms of this, and it's been going on for months. Wow. Now, this past week, with Brianna Wu, the latest woman to be sent from her home, including her husband, and having to bring in the police, what has happened is we're starting to find people actually talking about this. So you have game designers who are coming out and saying, look, I was hesitant to even talk about this. I didn't want to address it, but I'm finally going to do it. Journalists are starting to do the same. And what has been a major turning point is that you have now celebrities weighing in. So John Stewart from The Daily Show, Seth Rogen, Patton Oswalt, uh, Will Wheaton. Uh, the list has been going on and on and on. And a lot of the young people who have been involved in this are now standing back and having second thoughts as to their involvement in what they thought was a protest when they're starting to realize that all their heroes are saying, look, this is really hateful and misogynistic, and you really have to kind of think about what you're doing and not be involved in something that's causing a lot of harm for a lot of people. And, and you're being manipulated. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, when you're young, you want to belong to a social yep. tribe. Yep. You want yep. to have an identity. And when there's a protest... When there's something to fight against, that can be very, very attractive. And that's every been, generation has. You, I was going to say, youth culture has had that going on every single generation in their own way, in their wherever the culture is at the time. Yeah. And the people who have been perpetuating this online campaign, they understand that. Because they try to create their own websites that, that couch this as being us versus yeah. them. 